The Turkish getup is one of the most popular kettlebell exercises that you can do. It offers you a full body training and is awesome for shoulder health and stability. However, it requires some skill and many people always make the same mistakes. In this video, I'm going to offer you the perfect solution for the top five mistakes people are making in the Turkish Get up. But before we get started, I want you to join our free 50k giveaway. Get a chance to win lifetime access to our online kettlebell courses valued over $2,000. Link is in the description. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestag here. Let's jump right into the mistakes. Mistake number one is putting your lower back in danger. As you are descending, most people do a reverse lunge and now they try to reach for the floor. And if you try to reach for the floor with this constellation of my hip as well as my legs, I might put my lower back in danger. So here's what I do. Instead of doing a normal reverse lunge, I do a curtsy lunge to open up the hips. Looks like this. One, two. Now from this position, my lower back is safe and I can move around my strongest muscles in my hips without putting my weakest link in the chain in danger. Mistake number two is dropping down on your back like a bag of rice, not using any tension whatsoever. People now drop on their back like this, boom, which may cause problems. So what you want to do is distribute your weight between your right foot and your left elbow. So I keep tension in my abdominals, brace the core, and now I shift the kettlebell towards the middle or center line of my body, and now I can go down slowly, put the kettlebell down, and not cause any trouble as I reach the floor. Mistake number three is working with a limp wrist. There is a term that we call hand insertion, which means inserting your full wrist inside the window of the kettlebell, curling your fingers into a fist, and now, as you can see, I have this straight line down from my elbow up to my wrist, and now, no pressure on my forearm or on my wrist. However, if I grab the kettlebell like this, like many people do, this is a limp wrist, and now I feel everything alongside here. It doesn't feel comfortable, and now you want me to move through the Turkish getup with this? This doesn't work. Mistake number four, disregarding leverage mechanics. As we are down in the bottom position, many people try for the first time to get up like this and think, oh, that's impossible. That's why you have to use leverage. Right foot has contact with the floor, left arm has contact with the floor, and now I swivel around the kettlebell and using my body's leverage to get on the elbow. And now from here, I can move up safely. Mistake number five, you are racking your hips. Beginners rack their hips in the transition. So as they push their hips up, yes, they pull the leg back, but they don't do anything with their hips and therefore racking it. So what you want to do is, yes, you have to pull your front leg in, but you also have to rotate the hips. And from this position, I can continue with the exercise. Bonus mistake, you try to get up on the wrong side of bed. This will land you on your back instantly. Here's what you have to do. If you have the kettlebell in the right hand, always engage into the lunge with the left leg and vice versa. And a final pro tip at the end, use the kneeling jerk. The kneeling jerk happens in the windmill. As I wanna get up and prepare myself for the overhead lunge, I either have to stand up and then rotate my knee which causes some problems in my knee because I have a sensitive one. So what I wanna do is shift my body weight towards the heels and towards the hips of my body and then immediately sling around. That's what I call a leaning jerk. Warm, boom. And now I'm ready for the overhead lunge. Pro tip number two, you've already seen me do it if you paid any attention to this video, is start overhead. You see, many of us have been taught to start in the fetal position, which makes sense if you use extraordinarily heavy weight. However, most people don't have to use heavy weights and there might even be some diminishing 
returns. So most people can start overhead like this. One, two, three. And now I move through the get up and I count one rep when I'm done at the top. And if I have to rest, I rack the weight and breathe. I'll put the bell down and breathe. So here's the next step that you have to do. Like the video, consider subscribing, share with a friend, and then watch this video. This is where I take you step by step through a beginner's tutorial. And maybe you're just getting started with kettlebells. Maybe this is your first time with us. We're exclusively focused on kettlebells. If that's the case, you gotta check it out, watch it, and write now.